Hey y'all, it's me, Miss Ashley. I'm back with you again. And you might recognize the room I'm in. I am here at the church. So I'm in one of the kids' classrooms. Can you guess which one? Think about it, think about it, take your guess. You're about to find out if you're right. It is the purple room. Were you right? Did you guess? So all of these uh, classrooms have art on the walls. Some of you guys may know which room this is. But you're probably a little thrown off because I've got play lounge toys behind me. That's right, from the play lounge. We stole them and put them in here because on Sunday, this group that meets in this room is the, is the group that comes with small kids that can play. Um, we've got lots of different rooms open at the church where people can, can meet in smaller groups. And we've had several rooms that um, no one has come and met in. So if you and your family would like to, to come up to the church, but you'll still want to be a little bit separated, we do have some, some other rooms available that uh, no one's using yet. But for those of us who've been coming to this room, we've been having a blast and really enjoying getting to worship together and see the, we're still watching the service on the screen, but we're here in the building and we get to, to wave at each other <laughs> from a distance. <laughs> but it's it's still, it's still, a, a real blessing, um, you know, to, to worship as a group. So, um, miss you. Hope to see you back here soon, and um, and hope that you are faring well. I'm praying for you all. And um, in fact, let's do that right now. Let's open in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for what you are doing in our lives through these these trials. And um, I just thank you for the blessing this is for families to get to center around you and, um, and just depend on you in a way we've never depended on you before, Lord. I just ask you to be in the hearts and minds of each boy and girl, that they are encouraged and that they know that you are there and that you're their friend, Jesus. And Father God, we just ask that you continue to sustain us keep us healthy and help us to learn more about your word through the Holy Spirit. We ask these things in your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. All right. Well, now it's time for announcements. So every week I've been sharing with you guys about our summer plans and telling y'all about Vacation Bible School and garage sale and um, camp and everything. And some of it we've we've not had um, good dates for, and that's still true. We do not yet have a date for our garage sale or for our end of year Awana party, which we would really like to have um, as soon as we can. And um, I think the, um, the Texas governor uh, will make another announcement in the next few days. And so hopefully in the next couple weeks, we'll really be able to firm up those dates. Um, we have been giving you guys information about preteen camp and Lad and Lassie Day, but I have to tell you that things are changing again. So the um, kind of bummer news is that the camps have all closed for the summer. And so we will not be having preteen camp or Lad and Lassie Day in Stanton at the Circle Six Ranch. And I was really bummed about that when I first heard because I really like Circle Six. They do a great camp. It's a lot of fun. Um, and I was really looking forward to going back there this year. But now that they've canceled and we've had to make some other plans, I think what we're going to come up with is even better. I really do and I really really want to tell you about it because I have all these great ideas and um, but I'm gonna hold off until we know um, a few more details about how that's gonna work so um, let not your heart be troubled I know some of you will be really disappointed um, about no no summer camp but I promise we're gonna do some really fun things and host them here at the church and we're all gonna get through it together but we're we're gonna really make it fun it's I'm Oh, I really want to tell you, but it's it's so exciting. You'll just have to stay tuned. Um, so again, I'll be getting back to y'all first with our dates for the uh, kickoff summer party and also the garage sale. So stay tuned for that. And then hopefully more news soon to follow. All right, now it is time to dive into the word of God and do our lesson today. So you may remember last week, we talked about the early church and how um, Peter, um, Started, started things off with a Cracker Jack sermon, and thousands of people came to faith in Jesus Christ, and this began the, the church. And so Peter and John um, were two of Jesus' disciples, and they, they were 
part of this, this movement to um, part of the great commission that Jesus had told them to go out and preach my word to the ends of the earth. Well, right now they're still in Jerusalem and um, the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost um, and they've started their ministry, but where does it go from here? So we kind of talked about how the um, all the people that had come to Jerusalem, a lot of them were from out of town. And so instead of going back to their homes, they stayed in Jerusalem to um, to learn the word of God from the disciples. And um, they sold a lot of their property and their belongings so they could support one another. And now they're training up leaders to go out and preach the word. And so we're going to get into that a little bit today. Um, first, I'm going to put on my glasses so I can oh, see what I'm doing. Um, so I wanted to go over a little bit about, um, in, we're in the book of Acts and it's called the book of Acts because these are the acts or the actions of the apostles and the early church members. So one of those new, um, uh, leaders who we have not heard about yet, but he's, um, kind of a big name is Stephen and Stephen um, was a man of God, and he had an opportunity to address the high priest, um, the the Jewish high priest, and he gives a sermon where he mostly talks about um, the um, about Moses and the Israelites from the days of Abraham and the covenant. But then he really talks a lot about Moses leading the people out of Egypt and um, he talks about how the people were hard-hearted and they rejected um, at every step God's plan for them. Um, and he ends his sermon by saying, you stiff-necked people, you always resist the Holy Spirit. Um, and now has come the righteous one and you have betrayed and murdered him. Well, as you can imagine, the Jewish leaders were not too thrilled with this message. And so they immediately called for Stephen's execution, and they, they carried it out. They stoned him. They all threw stones at him. And um, it, was really, it was really sad. that So you have this, this angry group of religious scholars who are stoning Stephen. And... Um, he cries out, Stephen cries out to the Lord Jesus. It says, receive my spirit. And as he's being, as he's being killed um, by all these people, he prays for them and he says, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he said this, it says he fell asleep. And that, that means, you know, he passed away and he went to be with Jesus in heaven. Um, so this is kind of a really, the first really big um, sad thing that happens in the early church. Um, and, you know, it's, it's kind of a tough story, but I, I wanted to mention it because it's, it's real. You know, being, being a believer in Jesus Christ is not always easy, and it doesn't always come with riches and glory. In fact, a lot of times people don't like to hear the truth. And so it's important for us to know that we need to tell the truth and we need to share Jesus, even though it may not always lead to the best things for us, because the bigger plan is that Jesus's word is true. And we may not like it, but it's it's the truth. And Jesus, God took care of Stephen. And Stephen, he, he took him up to be with him in heaven. And also through Stephen, many people heard the truth. And he was he was martyred for his faith, but God's word is not is does not come back empty. And so I'm I know that there was a big return for the kingdom because of what Stephen was willing to do and willing to sacrifice, and he was willing to tell the truth. So one of the men who was there when Stephen was stoned was named Saul. And Saul was one of the religious leaders. He was very zealous. That means um, he was very excited about his faith and, um, and very enthusiastic. He really wanted to do things the right way. Um, and so he really wanted to serve God and he thought he loved God, but he thought the right thing was Judaism and not this new teaching about Jesus Christ. And so he was happy to see Stephen stone. In fact, he went around, um, causing trouble for Christians all over. He would pull them out of their homes and take them to prison. And that's called persecution. 
Um, and so the, the early church members were highly persecuted during this time. And people like Saul were, were um, trying to get them off the streets, try to get them to stop preaching the gospel, putting them in jail, um, even, even killing some of them like Stephen. And Saul thought he was doing the right thing. He thought that he was honoring God by doing that. And that, that sounds odd to us now, but he really believed he was right and they were wrong. Um, well, he found out different. So um, I'm skipping ahead now into chapter 9 um, for families that are following along. So Saul was breathing, it says he was breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord. And remember, he thinks he's doing the right thing. So he's going to Damascus. He's going to the synagogues, the Jewish synagogues there. Um, and he was going to try to find other believers, other Christians, and root them out. Um, and he was, he was wanting to bring them back to Jerusalem in chains, basically, and put them back in prison. Um, so he was walking along, and suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. And he fell to the ground, and he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you, Lord? Who, who is this voice speaking to me? And the voice said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with Saul stood speechless. They couldn't even talk. Because they could hear the voice, but they saw no one. So Saul gets up off the ground, and he opens his eyes, but he can see nothing. He's blind. Blinded by the light. So the men who were with him, they led him by the hand because he couldn't see anymore. And they took him to Damascus. And for three days, he could see nothing. He was completely blind. Um, he also used this time to fast. He neither ate nor drank. So he was very distressed. So you can imagine here, um, Saul thinks he's doing the right thing. He is heading towards this other town so he can imprison people who he thinks are wrong. And on the way, he is he a voice from heaven speaks to him and says, I am God. I am Jesus. You are persecuting me. And so Jesus spoke directly to Saul. Now, if we had an enemy, if we knew that there was someone out persecuting members of the church and trying to imprison them or even kill them, wouldn't we want to stop that person? Wouldn't we want to throw them in jail or maybe even be happy if something bad happened to them? That might be kind of what we're thinking in our hearts. But Jesus doesn't go this route. Instead of stopping Saul and just taking him out, he addresses Saul. He speaks to him personally. And so this is, this is a neat lesson for us about how we should treat our enemies and that it's always better to shine the light and to teach the truth and share the truth. And some people will always reject, reject the truth, but here's Saul, who's, who we would think would be the most hardened against the truth. He's already rejected it. And yet when Jesus puts it before him, he can't deny it. He cannot deny the truth of scripture. So he's blind for three days. He's in Damascus and he doesn't know what's going to happen next. He, he, he followed what Jesus said. He said, Jesus had told him, enter the city and you'll be told what to do. So he sits and waits for three days. And that's, that's a long time that he's not eating or drinking. Can you imagine not eating or drinking for three days and being blind? It was a rough time for Saul. And he doesn't know what's going to happen next. He doesn't know how long until he's going to find out more. Um, he just doesn't know. But while that was happening, the Lord was speaking to someone else. He was speaking to a man named Ananias who lived in Damascus. Now the Lord came to Ananias in a vision and he said, Ananias. Ananias said, here I am, Lord. That's what you say when the Lord speaks to you, by the way. If you hear a voice from heaven, you say, here I am, Lord. And that's what Ananias said. He was obedient to the Lord. And the Lord said to him, rise and go to the street called Straight. So he told him the name of the street. And he said, at the house of Judas, look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. 
So he's telling him exactly where to go. And he says, Behold, he is praying, and he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. So the Lord is talking to Ananias separately from Saul. So he's told Saul at this point um, to go to Damascus and wait. And so then he, the Lord talks to Ananias and says, you know, go to this man's house. You'll find Saul there. Um, so this was before cell phones and social media. So, you know, Jesus had to, had to speak to people directly in visions. So he was actually way more high tech than we are. Um, so Ananias says, wait a second. I have heard from many about this man. You're Saul, Saul of Tarsus. Is that who we're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. I've heard of him. He's not a stranger. I know, I know who that is. Um, I have heard how much evil he has done to your saints at Jerusalem. And here he's coming with authority from the chief priest to imprison, to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel, for I will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias departed and entered the house, and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road by which you came, has sent me here so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes, and he regained his sight. Then he rose and was baptized, and taking food, he was strengthened. Now, I don't know about you, but I've heard this story before. Uh, some of you may have heard this story before, but when I hear it again, when I read it again, it still strikes me what an amazing story this is that Saul, who was on his way to throw these people in prison, and instead he comes to faith in Jesus and goes out to preach the very word he had just been imprisoning people for preaching. And so Ananias here, um, you know, Ananias has a great part in this story too because he's obedient to the Lord. He knows who Saul is. He knows that under ordinary circumstances, he is the very type of person that Saul was going to throw in prison. And so by exposing himself to Saul, you know, he, he knows that Saul could has, has authority from the chief priests in Jerusalem to imprison him. And so he's really trusting the Lord here to, um, to know what's best because um, on his own knowledge of what he knows of Saul, he would never go put himself in front of Saul because he knows what, what Saul intends. But God tells, tells Ananias, he says, he is my chosen instrument. And so Saul had one plan, but God had a different plan and it was a better plan. So Saul here, he spent these three days blind and then Ananias shows up, knows exactly where he is, knows who he is. And I'm sure Saul had not told anyone who, who he was or what he was doing there because, um, you know, he, he doesn't know what's going on. He's blind. He's waiting for answers. And so this man shows up who's had a vision of the Lord and he regains his sight miraculously. So at this point, Paul knows that he was wrong and that God was right and that Jesus really is the son of God. And we're talking about a man who was absolutely determined not to believe this. He, he made it his goal in life not to believe this. And even he could not deny it. And we're going to see in the ministry of Paul that he, he doesn't just become a quiet follower of Jesus. He is a loud follower of Jesus. And he does go out to many other places. He travels all around the known world preaching the gospel of Jesus. And, and he does end up, he does suffer for Jesus' sake. He goes through many hardships and trials. And, and he says later that he deserves it. He knows that he, among all men, that he is the worst offender. And yet Christ saved even him and gave grace to even him who least deserved it. And, you know, we can all identify with that because all of us are sinners. None of us are perfect. And sometimes it's tempting to think, you know, I'm, I know other kids who are better than me, and maybe God wants to have a relationship with them and save them, but 
I, I don't think he really wants to save me. I'm not as good. But God saved even Saul, who had just overseen the execution of Stephen. He'd had, he stood there in support as people threw stones at Stephen, and yet God was willing to save even him. So the God who loved Stephen and, and took Stephen to be with him in heaven also loved Saul, the man who did it, and was willing to save Saul as well. And so that same God is willing to save each and every one of us and empower us to preach his word to others and share that gospel, whatever may come. And whether we go up to be with Jesus in heaven or we live a long life that is full of comfort, no matter what is in store for us, it is our responsibility to share the truth and to be a light to those who are blind. Let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your truth. Please help us to better understand your gospel as we read it and, and as we try to understand it. Lord, we depend on you to reveal that truth to us and show us how we can apply your word in our own lives. These people lived thousands of years ago and their, their world was different. And sometimes we may feel like they don't know what we, what we go through and we don't know what they went through. But Lord, you were there then and you are here now. And we depend on you for our truth and for our understanding. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do in blessing our lives. In your son Jesus' precious name, amen. All right, kids, that is it for today. Thank you for joining me online. And if you have any questions for me about the lesson or about anything else, um, you can have your mom or dad shoot me a message, ashley at odessabible.org. Um, mom and dad, if you have more questions about summer plans, you're welcome to contact me as well. And I just want to encourage you all to um, dive into the Word of God. You know, the lesson that I that I do here each week is is just a small little a small little tidbit, but it's a springboard for your family to um, dive in together and learn the Word of God, read it, talk about it together, and just really fellowship around His Word as a family. And that's what that's what it's all about, you know, is is doing life as a family. That's what God created the family for. And so, I just. Um, Pray to God that this is a time of blessing for your family as you learn to lean on one another and lean on Him. Uh, so kids, obey your mom and dad. I know it's getting really tough right now because um, we've all been locked up for so long, but hopefully we're coming towards the end of it and can get back together and do some fun church events, which I am really looking forward to. And I hope you guys have a wonderful week and I will see you next week. All right, bye.